So welcome to the video. Today we're going to take a look at how to do independent t-tests on SPSS. We'll also take a look at how to check the assumptions of that test. We'll take a quick look at how to create a graph to supplement the results section. And we'll take a look at how to report the results in APA style. So for this example, we're going to imagine we're interested in how quickly teams of rowers completed a course either going with the tide or against the tide. So in this column here, we have the times and seconds for 10 teams who completed the course with the tide. And in this column here, we have 10 times for people who completed the course or people or boats that completed the course against the tide. So of course, we would imagine that those that did it with the tide would do it faster than those that did it against the tide. But we can use the independent samples t-test to check whether any such difference is significant. So let's take a look at how to put these data into SPSS. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is go to variable view by clicking this button here. And I'm gonna use this top cell in the name column to give a name to the independent variable. So I'm gonna just call it group. Um, then I'm gonna to go to this values column. I'm gonna tick or click on it and then I'll click on this uh, gray box that appears. And I'm just gonna allocate a number to each one of the levels within the independent variable. So I'm gonna use the number one, and I'm gonna say that that stands for with tide, and then I'll click add. Then I'll put two here, and I'll put against tide in this uh, labels box, and I'll click add. So both of those now appear here. So when it looks like that, I'll go to OK. And then finally, I'll go to this measures column. I'll click on that and just tell SPSS that this is a nominal or categorical variable. So we told SPSS what the independent variable is. We'll now tell it what the dependent variable is. So I'm going to enter time into the second uh, cell in the name column. In this case, because we don't have different groups for this variable, we don't need to use this, this values column. So we can go straight to this measures column and I'll click on scale. So scale is like a, another word for continuous. So we use independent samples t-tests when we have a categorical or nominal independent variable, so separate groups, and when we have a continuous or scale variable, something like time. So now we've told SPSS what uh, those variables are, we can go to data view and we can start entering the data, we can see that group and time have appeared at the top of these two columns. So I'm just going to go back to my Excel file. I'm just going to select the data in the with tied column and then copy it. And I'll put it uh, here. And then next to that, I'm going to put 10 ones. Because we told SPSS that one means with tied. So when we enter a one there, with tied comes up. I'll go back and I'll grab the data for the against tide group. So I'm just going to copy that and put that here. And I'll enter 10 twos here to tell SPSS that that is the against tide data. And we can see that these, even though I'm entering one and two in this column, uh, these, these descriptions are coming up instead of the numbers. And that's because if I go to view, I've got value labels selected. If I unselect that, I just see the numbers. But I think it's better to be able to see those descriptions, so I tend to keep this clicked, uh, selected. So we've entered the data. We can now take a look at some of the assumptions of the independent samples t-test. One of the assumptions is that the data are normally distributed in each one of the groups. So this just means if we were to look at the data on a histogram, we would see that there's a nice symmetrical bell-shaped pattern. Uh, so to check this, one way of doing it is to go to Analyze, then down to Descriptive Statistics, then we can go over to Explore. I'm going to transfer my independent variable to the Factor List box, and my dependent variable to the Dependent List box. I've got both selected down here, that's fine, I'll just go to Plots, and then really the most important thing is to tick normality plots with tests. You can also check histograms. Um, I don't think you really need stem and leaf. So we'll, we'll just keep it like this. So we've got histogram ticks and we've got normality plots with uh, tests ticked. So when it looks like that, I'll go to continue and then okay. 
So there are sometimes some interesting things to see in this table here. Um, if you really want to understand the distribution of the data, you could look at the skewness and ketosis. But really the most interesting thing I would say is below in this tests of normality table. Um, you can also look at the histograms as well. But for this example, let's just focus on the tests of normality table. And we've got two different tests of normality here. We've got this one on the left, which I won't attempt to say. And we've got this Shapiro World one on the right. Often, if you have a large sample of, say, over 50, researchers will use this test on the left. But because we have a small sample of just 10 votes or 10 participants, I'm going to focus on the Shapiro Wilk side of the table. So these three statistics to the right. And the most interesting thing really is the SIG value. And in the case of this normality test, we actually want to see that the SIG value is not significant. So we have a non-significant value in this column. It indicates that the data are normally distributed. So because this value here is above 0 0.05, we can know that the data in the width tide condition are normally distributed. And the same thing here, this value here is larger than 0 0.05. So we know that the data in the against tide condition is also normally distributed. So that's the assumption checked. There is another assumption called homogeneity of variance, uh, which just means that the data are sort of spread out equally in both groups. But we don't need to check that one before running the test because we can actually check it as we run the test. So we'll go to analyze, we'll go now to compare means, and then over to independent samples t-test. I'm going to transfer a group to the grouping variables box and time to the test variables box. I'm going to click on this bit here, and that means that this becomes activated, this button here. So I'm going to click on this define groups button. And because we used one and two to describe the, the levels of the independent variable, I'm going to enter those values into these two boxes. So I'm going to put a 1 there and I'll put a 2 there. So I'm going to go to OK and that's going to run the test for us. And we can see that the we've got these mean values here. So we've got a mean of 1 for 2 seconds in the width tide condition and we've got a mean of 157 in the against tide condition. So we can see that there's a, a difference in the times but the t-test will tell us whether that difference is significant. So one thing to bear in mind with this independent samples t-test table is that it has two rows with similar statistics, and we first need to figure out which row we want to look at. So actually the first thing to look at is this Levine's test for equality of variances. So this is the homogeneity of variance assumption that I mentioned earlier. And again, we want to see, similar to the normality test, we actually want to see that there's a non-significant value here. So when we're looking at this Levine's uh, test section of the table, we can see that this value is above 0 0.05, which indicates that there was not a violation of the assumption of homogeneity of variance, which is another way of saying that that assumption was met. And that also determines which of these two rows we can look at. Uh, so we can see it says equal variance is assumed here, and it says equal variance is not assumed here. And we've just determined that the there were equal variances because this number is above 0 0.05. So we can focus on this top row within the table. And let me see. So the most interesting thing is often the SIG value. So in this case, this SIG value refers to whether this difference between the means is significant or not. And because this value is above 0 0.05, it tells us that there's not a significant difference in the race times between those two groups that competed either with the tide or against the tide. So we've checked the two assumptions of the test, so normality and homogeneity of variance. We've run the test, we've seen that there was not a significant uh, difference between those groups. I'm just going to show you quickly how to create a graph. So to do this, I'll go to graphs and then I'll go to chart builder. I'm just going to take this, so I've got bar selected as the default in this menu here. So I've got this simple bar uh, option here. If I double click that, so that appears here. I'm then just going to put the dependent variable in this y-axis box, and I'll put the group uh, variable in this x-axis box. Um, you can also choose to have error bars, so I'm going to click display error bars, and a typical type of error bar to have is these 95% confidence intervals, so that's already ticked. So I'll just leave that as it is, and then I'll go to OK. So this is what SPSS produces as a default when you create a graph. As you can see, it doesn't really look great at the moment, but what you can do is double click on it, 
and that will open this charts editor. Okay, so if I uh, double click on the bar, I can get to this bar options bit. And one thing you might want to do is just like play around with the different widths of the bar. At the moment, these look really wide. So I've just randomly chosen a smaller percentage here to decrease the width of those. You could also just change the color. So if I change, let me see, if I tick, click on one of them, I can see that this one is now highlighted. And if I go to properties window, so I just right, did a right click on this bar and then I went to properties window and then I can just choose like a, a different color. If it's APA style, you might want to do something like black and dark gray and lighter gray because generally you don't use colors. So uh, right click on that and then maybe, I don't know, this one's kind of gray. So now we have like two different types of gray and then you can also just change anything you want really. So if you click on this, you can mess around with the different fonts. So I've just double clicked on that. This opens the properties window. You can play around with the font style. You can play around with the font size. Yeah, different types of formatting. So I'm just gonna click uh, this close button and I can see that these those changes have been saved to my graph. Okay, so finally, let's take a look at how to report the results of the independent t-test as well as the results of the assumption checks that we performed. So here we go. So normally, I would just present all of these results in a single paragraph, but just to make it a bit clearer for us, I've sort of separated it into separate sentences. So you could just start the results by saying what you did, so what type of test you did, and why you conducted that test. So I've said, an independent samples t-test was conducted to compare race times in the with tide and against tide conditions. And now we're referring to the first of the assumption checks here. So we've got Shapiro Wilk tests indicated that the data were normally distributed in the with tide and against tide conditions. So I'll just show you where I got those numbers from. So if we think back to this test of normality table, and we focused on the right side of this table, so I said Shapiro Wilkes test, blah, blah, blah. So with tide, W equals 0.9. So with tide, and I've just rounded this, this value here to 0 0.90. Uh, so that's sort of an APA style um, to round to two decimal places for most values with the exception of P values. and this 10 value is the degrees of freedom. That's been put in brackets here. And then I've just got the P value. So that's in the sig column, 203, 203. And the same thing for the against tide conditions. We've got W equals 0 0.89. 0 0.89 is here, just rounded to two decimal places. We've got the 10 again, degrees of freedom, and we've got 1.89 or 0.189 rather which is the p-value. So that's the test of normality. The next test we have, another assumption check, was the homogeneity of variance. So we've said Levine's test indicated that the assumption of homogeneity of variance was met. And if you remember, that came from the t-test table. We looked at the left side of this independent samples test table, and we saw that the sig value was above 0 0.05. So it's specifically, it's 0.514. So that's the value that I have here. So P equals 0.514, and we've got F equals 0 0.44, and that's just this number here in the F column, rounded to two decimal places. So finally, to get to the, the results of the t-test itself, we've said there was not a significant difference in times between the with tide and against tide conditions. And I've just inserted uh, some means and standard deviations into that sentence. So those means and standard deviations, those descriptive statistics, come from this group statistics box. So it's got mean equals 142.1. And that's what we've got here, just rounded to two decimal places. SD means standard deviation, uh, 20.62, which will be rounded to to 0.63 and then the same values for the against tide condition so against tide mean 157.9 157.9 standard deviation 23.36 rounded to two decimal places and we have sd equals 23.36 and then if we go back down to the independent samples test table we can take a look at where those values come from so we've got t equals minus 1.60 so if you remember, we decided that we needed to focus on the top part of the table. So we've got that value here, minus 1.60. The value in brackets is the degrees of freedom. So the DF 
So that comes from here, 18. And then finally, we have the p-value. So p equals 1.26, and that comes from here. And finally, this is an example of how you could present that graph that we created. This information is presented in APA style. Figure one in bold, and beneath that, we've got a, a title. It uses what we call title case, which basically means that you capitalize the first letter in all of the words, with the exception of things like prepositions and articles, like in, the, and and. And I've just specified that the error bars refer to 95% confidence intervals. So that's pretty much all there is to it. I hope that helps. If you have any questions, just let me know in the comments and I'll try to get back to you. Thanks a lot for watching. See you next time.